Animals are always talking, but are they saying anything? Are the birds outside my window in the morning judging me for sleeping past sunrise? If only we could understand them. Well, it turns out we might be able to. Artificial intelligence is paving the way towards this goal. And within a year, we may hear the first translations of animal languages. But how are we achieving this? Let's discuss it. Overcoming the monumental divide between human and animal language has always fascinated us. Throughout human history, we have told stories of people communicating with animals, from stories of adventurers in ancient Greece, discovering talking monsters, to modern movie franchises. For ancient civilizations, animals were a vital resource and a constant threat. So the idea of being able to communicate with them was seen as a gift from the gods. Nowadays, we just want to talk to our pets like we do the rest of our family. The exciting thing is, we might be able to achieve this sometime soon. The advent of more complex artificial intelligence and better methods for acquiring large swaths of data have built a bridge to connect us to the animal world. But how does it work? The most common way that we translate between languages is to use two separate AIs. One that takes an input, let's say English, and encodes it into a mathematical representation of a sentence called an embedding. And a second that takes that representation and decodes it into another language, say German. But this requires a shared index. To translate I am going hiking into Ich gehe Wanderweg, we need to already know how to translate from English to German. We need an equivalent of a Rosetta Stone for the two languages or a human that can speak both languages to confirm if this translation is correct. Well, at least that used to be true. Scientists have found a new way to translate languages that does not require any understanding of either language. Instead, we just need to make maps of the languages and compare them. To make a map, they measure the statistical distance between words and how often those words are used in conjunction with each other. Each dot on the map is a word and the distance in this multi-dimensional space between the dots encodes the information of the average distance between the words. For a simple example, the blue house is nice. The mapping would detect all of the adjacent words and give them a distance of one, like blue house, and then a distance of two for words that have something in between, like that house. A real map is a little bit more complex than this, but this gives the general gist of how it works. The map basically measures what words are commonly used together and how the grammar works, but it doesn't require any understanding. But how does this help with translations? Well, it turns out that this map is basically the same for all languages. If you take the map of English and you overlay it with any other language, it is extremely close to each other. So to translate, you just have to highlight the words in the English map and then pick the adjacent words in the German map. The amazing thing is, this works. And it even works for languages that don't share a similar structure, like English and Chinese. So if this can work for such dramatically different human languages, can it work for animals? Animals clearly communicate, but language is special because it has grammar. There is a structure to the words that helps to improve our understanding. It is not obvious that other animal species will have grammar in their communication. And if they do, will it look anything like any of the grammar that we've invented? However, there is evidence that some animal species do have a form of language that goes beyond a series of words. Or should I say, grunts, barks, squeaks, squawks, meows, and for a lyrebird, any sound that it wants. But there is one species that stands above the rest as the most likely to have a complex form of language, sperm whales. These majestic deep sea creatures are truly bizarre. They have an eerie sleeping technique of floating vertically in the sea, which I can only imagine is the sea life equivalent of vampires sleeping with their arms folded. They also live in well-connected social groups, which is also similar to vampires. But unlike vampires, they communicate with other sperm whales through a series of clicks. 
These clicks are the loudest sound made by any animal on the planet, reaching up to 230 decibels, which is mind-bogglingly loud. Considering that decibels are a logarithmic scale, meaning that an increase in 10 dB is a doubling of the apparent loudness, for reference, prolonged exposure to 85 decibels can cause damage to our ears, and at 140, we will start to feel pain. Luckily, there is not too many things that are this loud, a jet taking off is around 130. Gunfire is around 140 dB and goes up to around 190. And even some of the loudest, most violent volcanic eruptions have been calculated to be around 200 decibels. Sperm whales get up to 230 decibels, which is six times more loud than a rocket or a volcano. This is so loud that they would rupture our eardrums and potentially so loud that if we were standing next to them, we could die from the intensity of the click. They need this volume to be able to communicate with their whale pod over hundreds to thousands of kilometers away. But why do we think that they have a proper language system? Simply put, that is what the science is telling us. Scientists have spent a lot of time recording and categorizing clicks from these whales and they have discovered amazing complexity to their communication. Their clicks have a pattern to them. They come in a series of clicks that appear to be akin to words, as the same pattern is often repeated when doing the same thing. For example, one series of clicks can be associated with diving down, while another can be associated with coming up for air. Additionally, there is a distinct difference between clicks that are used for echolocation and ones that are used for communication. This all points in one direction, Sperm whales have a rich and complex form of communication. But is it language? This is where we hope to find out. To answer this question, we plan to make a map of sperm whale language that can be overlaid with our language to translate. This might not work. The patterns that we have in our languages may be uniquely human. Even if our languages are dramatically different, there might be a common thread that ties them together through our humanity. But there is only one way to find out, and that is by doing. To make a map, we need data, and we need a lot of it, which is not easy to come by. So scientists are deploying thousands of microphones into the ocean to listen to sperm whale clicks and to make a language map. These come in various different forms, from floating in the ocean, to being physically attached to the sperm whales themselves. Scientists are then using machine learning to filter through hundreds of years worth of audio to find just the communication clicks. Initially, the machine learning will start to detect which whale made which click. Then it will start to detect which whales are communicating with each other, and then start to make predictions on what the response will be given a series of clicks. This is the beginning of making a large language model like ChatGPT, but for whales. An exciting thing is, we may have enough data to start doing this within a year. You need a lot of data to form something like ChatGPT, but within a year, we might have enough. It is not going to be as much data that was used to create ChatGPT3, but it might be similar to ChatGPT2, which is enough for us to start understanding what they are saying, even if it is rudimentary. Some of these topics sound complicated, but anyone can understand them. And one way to, is to try and learn them using the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online platform that makes learning easy. Artificial intelligence and neural networks seem complex and out of reach, but they are not. You can take courses like this one on Brilliant and learn from zero knowledge what these networks are and how to use them. The interactive experience of Brilliant takes what could be a boring and slow process into a fun and engaging one. When you get into understanding how neural networks work, it is fun, but it can be daunting to get over the initial hump of starting and that is where Brilliant can help. You can get started for free for 30 days and the first 200 people that sign up using the link brilliant.org slash science discussed will get a further 20% off. AI is such an exciting topic, but it also has issues. And in the long run, it might also be detrimental to the scientific process. To find out more about these issues, check out this video where I discuss them.